call this meeting to order. <coughs> Resolve that the agenda for the February 5th, 2019 regular meeting of council be received. Moved by Councillor Montoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. Resolve that the minutes of the January 15, 2000 Council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Antoni. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> All right, we'll skip right through reception of delegations and receptions of petitions, straight to communications. You have there before you the information that was presented to Council in regards to the uh, column that's provided to uh, councillors and, and the, uh, I believe the MLA and the MP uh, each month or, or each week. We have a rotation and that's, you can see the schedule there. So is there any discussion on, uh, on that? <coughs> I think in the past it, the, uh, the column has been a good opportunity for, for councillors to uh, to let people know what's going on in town, different committees we sit on, whether it be uh, watershed or health or you know library, it's been a good opportunity to fill. You know, we fill each other in every two weeks, but it's a good opportunity to fill the uh, the uh, electric in as well. So I, I I think it's been a benefit to us, and I'd love to see it continue. Councilman Tony, I guess a, a few a few of you have heard my thoughts about this about the article. Um, and I agree that it's a great opportunity, but I would like to see it more as as a, as a space done as council as a whole, as as opposed to individuals individual perspectives. I think that we should utilize the space to explain or to talk about exactly what we are what we're doing and at different committees for you know that certain period. But it, I'd like to see it as a whole council and a. And a group effort for uh, for communications to the entire public I guess the glory I guess uh, I I don't have a problem with you know telling what the what the town is officially but a lot of times it also lets us lead lead the public discourse on, on different issues take for example Councilor Morio wrote a, an article uh, regarding the splash park which it wasn't the town's position per se we'd never passed a resolution it, it, it brought forward some part we had two resolutions passed so it brought forward some parts but it it led the discussion and that's part of what we're here to do is is lead discussion on, on issues and and to uh, put forth different viewpoints and different ideas and it's a good opportunity to do that so to, to write an article every so many weeks by committee I I guess I guess we could uh, all seven of us sit down and and uh, and write a, an article every every few weeks by by committee, but sometimes it does provide benefit of it's not necessarily the town's position at the time. It may be a position being put forward. But the next, the following week it could be complete opposite position, but at least it's leading the discourse in 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 getting people talking about things that that the town may not even have a position on yet. <laughs> Sorry, I, I mean we can we can debate it, I guess, as as much as we like. But with all due respect, I <clears throat> if we wanted to boast our own personal opinions on a, on a certain matter, I don't think that we should use valuable space given to us by free space. We sh we if we probably should look at maybe providing that on our own behalf, if it's our own personal opinion, our own thoughts. Um, I just like to utilize free space by the newspaper to, to portray facts and, and um, what we're do, current situations, current facts, and maybe some projected future visions. Councilor Gray. It is my experience that the deepest arguments are often between persons whose positions are actually remarkably close. 
if you're diametrically opposite, there's not much to discuss. And uh, I think that, to some extent, is what is happening here. The positions of my colleagues are not, your worship, in my view, exclusive of each other. In fact, they're complementary. I, I agree with Constable Delorier, Councillor Delorier, that writing a, an article by committee is probably not a helpful enterprise, but I don't think that's what Constable Latoni was suggesting. I have, since my election, suggested a different process, a proactive process, a planning process. And I agree with Constable Con Councillor um, Delorier that some of our material should be cutting edge in the sense of leading discussion, leading instruction, letting people know more than facts, but, but driving the discussion. I agree with that. I agreed with it yesterday when I spoke, and I agree with it tonight when I speak again. But the point of an article like this, the point of us, of me, bitching and complaining and you putting in a communications committee is that we have too often not been ahead of the curve on communications. We have too often not advanced things in the way that um, Councillor Gloria has suggested and have used this space as our private opportunity to tout individual things or ourselves. That surely cannot be the purpose. The purpose needs to be that we are communicating to citizens and to other municipalities, here's our vision for what's going to occur. Here's the things that are happening and here's the decisions and the facts that are going to drive council decisions. So in the first instance of February 26th, I would expect we would have some communication with the public about the budgeting process and about what the issues were and about what process for consultation we were going to do. And we can assign that to a councillor, we can assign that to the CAO, we can assign it to whoever we like for a draft, but it should represent the views of council generally. I, I have to say I'm not much, and I, and I agree that councillors should feel free, particularly in this forum, to speak individually, and they should be free outside of this room to speak as citizens individually. But when they speak as councillors, they should be speaking for all of council. And the process that I understand that we are supposed to use, both because of the provisions of the Municipal Act and the Code of Conduct that we have, is that there is a fulsome debate here. But your decision after the debate is you either get on board with whatever the majority vote is, or you resign. Those are your choices. You don't get to go and have your own view later. And so I think it's a wasted opportunity if we don't focus what we want to communicate to the public, if we don't sort of agree this is our message. Now, I would choose budget and, and, and some of the challenges that are coming and so on. I think we can write enough that the issue will be that the Star and Times is likely to edit us down <laughs> on this process, not that we won't have enough to say on that. And, and, and each level, we should have things that the town is communicating that says this is why we're moving in this direction. This is what we want to achieve. This is the process for you to communicate with us. And this is where you need to look up to find things for, for transparency. Because people, you know, we started putting all of our bylaws on in first reading, second reading, and so on. And so people, but, you know, I would suspect there's only a handful of people who are actually using that. We need to promote it. We need to get people involved. The way to create democracy is to make people exercise. So I don't think that, they're, that the two positions are that far apart. I just I think that, that it's an individual, I don't care if it's an individual council, but that it's the collective vision of council about what we're going to communicate. Because we have to get a, we have to start getting ahead of the curve. Just as I will later bitch once again, that we need to get ahead of the curve in planning. We need to have a vision that, that transcends individual projects and that is our vision of what we're going to achieve. Our communication strategy needs to have we reflect that as well. So I, I think the two positions are the same. I just think that they are focusing on different things.
Councilor DeWine. I, I guess the issue I see, you, 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 you both mentioned the, the collective vision of council. Co council doesn't have a collective vision until a, either a resolution or a bylaw is passed. So, you know, take, take I'll, I'll go, go again to the article Councilor Morio wrote six months ago. That wasn't the co collective vision of the town. It took some pieces, but a lot of the things he referenced in there weren't necessarily the collective vision of the town. And I, I, I guess I'd be fearful that under, well, I'm not even too sure exactly what the process that's being advocated for looks like, but under that process, we wouldn't be able to write something like that. And to me, that, that, does, that doesn't do us any good either. So. Let me answer two, those two questions. The first is that uh, the, the solution for writing that is exactly what Cosmore presumably did. I didn't read the article, so I don't know. But it is, um, we are having a debate in council. Here is one side of the debate. Here are the facts on the other side. Here's the process we're using to decide this. We need to hear from you. I presume that's what he wrote, more or less, because I know him to be a balanced, fair person, and that's what I would expect a balanced and fair person to do. So if you do that, that is the collective vision of council. That is saying, we're having this debate, here's some information. And, and the way the process is actually pretty simple. We assign the process to somebody, maybe the CAO, maybe one of our colleagues, and then at a meeting prior, or in some way distributing it prior, so that people can have input a editorial input in terms of making sure there aren't glaring, speaking of glaring grammatical errors, it's <laughs> Councillor White now. Um, so there aren't glaring grammatical errors, but also so there aren't things that are wrong, and so that there aren't things that, that don't lead the discussion, that, that, that retrograde the discussion by, by making it less than positive. So uh, I think it's not a complicated process. It, it will be complicated for February the 26th, but it won't be for April the 23rd. Councillor Dore. That, that pretty much has been our, maybe, maybe we're at fault for not explaining how, I don't think we've ever had an opportunity to write where all, we haven't emailed it a week or so in advance, whoever we, was assigned to write that week, we emailed it to everybody, said, what do you think? Is it yay, nay, what should we, what should we change? So that, I don't, I've never been taken by surprise in, in reading something in the paper that I didn't know what was what was coming, or I have a chance to say that's that's not correct, or we can't do this or that. So th that has been our process up to this point. Mm -hmm. As I said, I don't think that there was that much difference between the articles. No. Councillor Morio. Um, <coughs> Councillor Glory is exactly correct. Like we come, we whoever's turn it was, whoever volunteered to do the article for that date, put out the idea, wrote a draft, sent it out to all the rest of the council for editing grammar, whatever, so that um, we all knew what was coming, that we're putting out the facts, things like that, so that uh, we weren't all blindsided or inciting a huge riot debate, though, debating in public and stuff like that. It was uh, another forum to put out a message out there. So, but like, I, I agree with you, Council of Great. I think we're almost everybody all on the same page and stuff like that. It's just um, I guess the procedure or formalizing the process of how we pick a topic, how it gets written, and how it gets submitted. So. I don't think we need to describe it to individual councillors. It can be submitted as a council document. So what's the will then, I guess, is the question. Like, does council want to continue as it was, or have the message there as uh, written by, if it's two councillors or one councillor, and then it's 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 presented as council or or what? Because we can't debate this all night, so we'll have to make a decision on what we want to do. <clears throat> Councillor Gloria. I have no problem with the way the process was, so I I I I'm fine with having the status quo. Okay. Councillor Memorial. Um <coughs> with status quo and things of that one unless it was mentioned before. Like until there's a formal resolution passed on the thing, then that becomes the voice of council. Other than that, it's um, it's open discussion for whoever's saying. We may be all saying the same 
thing but until it's a uh, if we're putting it out as a council message then there might be the uh, misconception that that's already a resolution or something that's been decided on and that's the path that we're taking it's just one of the pitfalls or cautionary comments I have to put on that but uh, personally I'm fine with, with the way the process was it gives each uh, councillor an opportunity to go slap on something their way so if that's why well, I, I don't think it should be an individual council's response I think it's it should be a message from the town or whatever but I, 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 go ahead, I would agree with that I would like to see it as a message from the town of Swan River rather than opposed to individual individuals Councilor Gloria I, I guess <coughs> if it's a if it's from the town of Swan River, that's our position on it. And a lot of times things have been written that I don't, we haven't voted on and I don't necessarily agree with, but I'm not opposed to having them written and put out there for, for uh, public debate if, if, if that's the, the, the a position that another council is pushing, putting forward. But that's the point. That's exactly my point. It shouldn't be. That's, that's not the forum for one councillor or another to have to advocate a particular position. That, that if you want to do that, write a letter to the editor. Anyway, that's my view is it's not the forum okay. for that. It's, it's the forum for information and for, uh, I think I agree with you entirely alone, one thing, Cosmo Deloria. I think it's absolutely the role of being leaders, of driving debate, of being coming edge, of putting out other things. But it shouldn't be something that If there is, if, if for instance, in somebody's individual opinion, the uh, contrary opinion should also be written in the same article. So, uh, so I guess then, if if we continue on with the way it was done, but it, it went out, you know, prior to it being printed, that the rest of the council, you know, agrees with it, and or like Councilor Gray says, there, if it's one-sided and, and there has to be. Uh, the, a dissent of the exactly then perhaps and that should be in there as well Councillor Deloria would a, would a acceptable compromise be for, for nine nine articles out of ten there's nothing too terribly controversial I'm fine with being from Thomas or whatever should should we want to put forward a you know a, a, an article that's that's causing a lot of issues we'll put for two councillors can write opposing perfect opposing views on it and they can be ascribed to their name because, yeah, well, we can say there are these views speaking on one half is this council speaking on without okay. ascribing. Okay, so we have to have uh, somebody uh, prepare one for uh, February the 22nd or the uh, February 22nd edition. So I'm a voluntarian would like to make a comment. Go ahead, Councillor. I've never felt that the, uh, the time and the space was for advocating for personal issues. I thought it was for the dissemination of information and of activities that we as counselors were involved in and to let the public know this is what, in my, in my case, Dwayne is working towards. So I don't, I don't see it as advocating or, or to cause debate, period. Councilor DeLaurier. <laughs> I just find it comical because oftentimes yours is the, is the most prominent that is not the position of counsel. I, and I, you know what? You're not wrong, but oftentimes you're, 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 the, the viewpoints you're putting forward are not wrong or anything, but they're definitely Dwayne White's that's objectives. Why, and that's why I signed my name, not counsel. But Councilor Gray. That's exactly the point I was making just before you came in. If, if, if the article is intended to say, here's what I'm doing for you, political ad, fair enough. Take out of an ad. Write a letter to the editor. Buy a sign. <coughs> do whatever you want. If it's for the, it, it's not our opportunity to electioneer. And so, uh, again, I think you'll get a lot of renting from me if you send one like that. Because <laughs> I'm not, it's, it's about 
structural positions. It's about advocating things. It's about changing. It's about us being transparent. And, and if we don't do that, we, we lose an opportunity. Anyway, I guess we can see it on each yeah, article. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, see that. And uh, like I said, um, someone should give me an idea of who uh, wants to do this the next one. Otherwise, I may have to appoint somebody. So. Well, I think we should follow your cause with Chancellor Friesen. <laughs> <laughs> this, this does happen once in a while. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, reports in committee. Uh, Superintendent of Works uh, resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Mantoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Uh, you have before you the superintendent of works report questions or comments to Mr. Poole. Councilor Delorier. Um, has everybody, anybody who's read the uh, newspaper today can probably sur surmise that uh, the Lions are <coughs> a better word tendered to resignation as far as, as far as picking up the recycling. Um, can you uh, forward that letter that they sent to the council? Yep. Okay, thank you. Some it's on here. It's on here. Yeah. Thought it was a shitty one. Okay. Good. Good. I saw it somewhere. I don't know where. It should be. Should be. Mm -hmm. <coughs> there's right information, up. and then the recycling breakdown is the right. breakdown oh, that I used for this afternoon. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Resolved that the January 2019 Fire Chief Report be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Montoni. Discussion. You see the report there from the Chief. Okay. Just, Councillor Morio. Just like that there. It's like already for the month of January, we had two significant structures of fire uh, in the town of Swan River. Um, looking at the man hours already accumulated for the, the month, um, keeping up at this rate, I think it's going to be another pressure year for the fire department, um, budget wise for salaries and things like that. So, so hopefully, if, uh, their situation improves that we're not having uh, huge incidents with man hour calls. But uh, it's good on them for. Uh, Especially those two uh, major fires working in the cold environment. That uh, those two days were um, my hats off to those uh, guys for getting up in the middle of the night Absolutely. and um, dealing with that. So. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Go ahead, Councillor Gray. <coughs> I, I'm, I'm mystified. But, well, maybe there's more. Do we have? I, I, I haven't looked at or I haven't seen the shared service agreements we have with these two neighboring municipalities. Do they, do they not have to pay us for each trip and service? Mm -hmm. they, pay, they pay us. Um, at the end of the year, we add up how many, how many, uh, what percentage of the calls they made up. And then they pay, we bill them for the previous year's uh, fire, fire department expenses based on that percentage. Do we include like, capital costs? We, we normally did. I believe it got missed. Last year, or the year before, so when I looked for it, it didn't look like we paid, we, we were paid for that, and it struck me that was one of the things that was most irksome to me. And so I'm not sure why we wouldn't have invoiced it, or at least have it reflected as part of some kind of invoicing process. Unless unless I'm missing something, we, we don't invoice for shared service. That I, at the end of the year, we send one one, in, or I think we send two invoices a year, or one invoice a year. Like one invoice. One invoice. Yeah. So one invoice a year for the so previous year. capital or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Okay, uh, next is the uh, council and CAO report. So, Councillor, who's ready? Councillor White, no, I'm sorry, Councillor Morio. Um, this past uh, period, uh, we've had a couple of committee meetings. Uh, uh, the general uh, government and finance met a number of times. Uh, let the chair speak on that. Um, we've met a couple. Um, 
three or four times in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the Transportation and Environmental Health Committee uh, met on January 29th and we started looking through uh, the snow removal policy, um, looking for um, errors, corrections, omissions, and things where they can do improve things. Um, we also dove back into the recycling and garbage collection issues that we're dealing with, with options um, and in light of some of the uh, correspondence that we got from the Lions Club. Um, we were to meet tonight uh, to continue that discussion to potentially bring some recommendations to Council, but I uh, understand we didn't get all the information that we were with hoping to get by last Friday to make a complete uh, educated uh, recommendation to Council. So once we get that in the next coming days, we will reschedule it and hopefully we can bring a formal recommendation regarding recycling and garbage collection uh, to Council for a recommendation. Um, we had a preliminary uh, budget meeting for, um, more or less on January 29th to let us know where we were going, where we're at, um, and then how do we move forward. And then last night we had a G5 uh, meeting um, hosted by the Swan Valley School Division. Um, there were a number of topics uh, brought up um, by various uh, municipalities. Um, and for myself, I brought up the uh, uh, a valley-wide business license initiative uh, where all the municipalities in the G4 or in the Swan Valley uh, share one business license amongst everybody instead of having to purchase four different business licenses um, under different rules and costs in each municipality. So, uh, it's plenary uh, and we will have a, I guess, strike the little working group to work on that and then bring it back for, for the discussion. There's other councillors that brought up stuff, but I'll let them discuss that. And Councillor Morio, on the, uh, the, the business license thing, I'll invite the Chamber of Commerce yes. to join in with you as well. Yeah, that should be an integral part of bringing us all together with the information. Good. Good. I'm looking forward to that. So it'll be all about taking barriers down for businesses that are coming to the Valley versus putting up more barriers. Good. It's a good initiative. So. <clears throat> I have so many things to talk about, but uh, I'll be quick and brief and only hit a few few here. Uh, my latest latest meeting today was with um, the Chamber of Commerce, which I, I sit on, uh, and Settlement Services, and there was discussion of a, of a grant proposal coming through um, in the works for bringing in immigrants, a federal program bringing immigrants to rural Manitoba. So we're excited with that. Um, we're hoping that every member of council will bring bring forth a letter of support. So I'm, at this time I'm requesting a, a letter of support for that if all, if all, all council feels the same way on, on that initiative. There's no cost associated at this time with or in the near future the settlement services will be taking the lead on that but it'll be a driving force um, with um, the Chamber of Commerce rise and the economic development side. So letter of support if we all feel the same on that, that'd be great. Um, speaking on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce at this time, we're disappointed to hear that um, there can have been a, a worked out effort in regards to assistance with, with helping the parking lot get cleared at that site, even though that the town owns the property there. Um, that's just my spiel on that. Um, <clears throat> my first G5 meeting was interesting. Um, I guess I was thinking that there was a whole lot more to it, but it wasn't as big and grand as I was I, w I was envisioning. So it was, but it's still a good opportunity. Meal was great. Um, the uh, relationships that are there are always great conversation is great um, I have a lot of work to do on my my end uh, with my committees and, and other groups that I'm involved with so I'll leave it at that but so uh, on your request I don't know if all council was here that again so maybe you should repeat that again uh, my requ the request Which for one? the letter of support so ah, sorry the letter of support for settlement services um, just so that settlement services can have that letter of support to attach with their grants. 
uh, represents <coughs> us. Nothing to say that we will get it, but it would be nice to show that every municipality is in, in favor of bringing more workers to the valley. Um, it helps streamline them straight to the valley and it avoids um, LMIA uh, reports, so it kind of streamlines them more geared towards. It's like a it's an LMIA It's a labor and marketing analysis, uh, initiative analysis, labor market information analysis report. Basically tells uh, the federal government if if we meet the criteria of bringing in a, an, an immigrant into the community, looks at things like unemployment rates, um, employment available, standings of the community, a whole lot of factors. They are very expensive, anywhere from one to three thousand dollars to fill out the application, and no guarantee that any, that you will get an employee. So I'm sensing that council supports this. Okay. I support it. I saw a news, news article. I think it was CDC or CTV that had that. I think the community in Warden has been using that process for a while and they're very successful in getting hundreds of uh, immigrants come in, like skilled laborers, uh, mechanics, industrial people to help fill their market uh, for us. So I have no issue in picking that back. So you can send the details of that to me or we can sit down and look at that. Okay, Councillor Delahaye. Um, First meeting I had after uh, last council meeting, I had the watershed district meeting. Uh, talked to most of you guys about it, but just to recap, um, I, every vote that uh, every position I took, I lost very bad. So we didn't have much support for the, the positions the town was putting forward, such as moving the uh, assessment from 2012 to 2018. Our neighbors thought it best to uh, stay at 2012. Um, as well, with new legislation, there was a proposal put forward to adopt, uh, to do away in 2020 with going off land assessment and going to just straight percentages. The percentages that were put forward were identical to the percentages that the 2012 assessment had us at, which was 16%. Um, I, there, there, that was the only rationale behind those numbers and to me if you're doing away with, with land assessment, what's the rationale for, for the percentages and uh, one could not be identified for me so I didn't, to just pick random percentages I didn't think was in, in our best interest either but nonetheless I lost that vote as well, I was the only uh, descending vote there. So what what's going to happen now is by March the provincial government wants to know uh, basically if we're in the new watershed or out of the new watershed and if we that that's the two sample resolutions they provided I, I would I would uh, suggest there's a third resolution we could possibly pass which would be we're in but we don't agree to the uh, to the percentages being put forward um, so I'm going to be bringing a, res a, res a resolution forward next meeting. You guys indicate to me what the direction of the town should be, because um, we have to let them know by March. So uh, th there's some intermunicipal relationships to to think about with this. So I, I guess I'll let you guys think on that for for the next two weeks. But next meeting, be, it'll be on the agenda, and there will be a discussion, and we'll and we'll have a resolution come out of it. Uh, then I had the library meeting in Benito. Um, we alternate sites. Uh, we we uh, there was a hiring done. We have a new employee, so we're back up to full staff, I believe, at the Swan River uh, branch. Uh, 29th, we had the budget meeting, um, which it wasn't surprising in any way. I I knew those numbers were coming, but I know that our administration has a lot of hard work ahead of them, so. I have full confidence in them. Um, last night at G5, uh, I thought it was a great uh, presentation by Councillors Morio, White, and Gray. Um, and uh, I don't know how your working group, how many people you are having on it, but if there's two from each municipality, <coughs> I'd, I'd be interested in being on that working group. Um, that is it for me. All right. Thank you.
kill Councillor White? Uh, I had a meeting on the 16th with the Safe House girls, and, and one of the things that jumped out at me is they feel there's roughly 80 to 100 homeless people in our community. So I think we have to be aware of that. And part of the problem, again, is that methamphetamine, which is a common denominator in many of my themes. On the 22nd, I had the pleasure of taking an anesthetist who would like to come to practice in, the, in our town. And we did a tour of the hospital and the primary care clinic. But, and we've now directed her into the proper channels as to how to make that happen. I suspect it will be difficult because of a language issue and an accreditation issue. But I hope I'm wrong. Uh, January 23rd, uh, I met with the PMH people through telehealth, and I shared with them the, the thoughts of our community relative to the CT scan and uh, the primary care clinic needs relative to space. And they brought up, I think you may have mentioned already, Councilor Moore, that shared services have now taken over EMS? Not yet. Not yet? It's in the process? Okay, thank you. And then on the 24th, I went to the Swanner Business Consortium, uh, Councillor Wintoni, uh, Councillor Phil, was anybody else here? I missed one once before. Uh, regardless, uh, what a compliment to the uh, consortium who tried to find ways, and one of their highlights was the methamphetamine issues again and the problems that's causing in our community. And one of the larger businesses said a year ago they lost $250,000 to petty theft. Some of that could be attributed to people trying to service their drug habits. That uh, really jumped out to me. The 24th, I met the harm meeting at CMHA and the concerns with hepatitis C and HIV. And uh, their attempt is trying to educate these people who have those issues. So they have over 70 clients who meet regularly who have significant drug issues. I'll get chastised for this, but I think it does relate to the community. The sport fish people met on the 24th, and one of their goals is to bring in exotic species, for example, muscalunge, crappie, and the thinking is that that, one of our goals as a group is to bring tourism to the community, economic development to the community, which will certainly help our community. So if we would probably be the only place north in this part of Manitoba, I guess the northeast angle of Lake of, Lake, uh, Lake of the Woods might have, it does have muskie, but no, nowhere else. Uh, the budget meeting on the 29th went well. I appreciate uh, Derek's uh, input into that. The Councilor Morial and I met on the 31st with Staff Sergeant Campbell <coughs> to talk about uh, staffing. We've been probably a year and a half plus without a Staff Sergeant. Prior to that, we had one for a year. Prior to that, for two years. Prior to that, for years. So we're concerned that we don't have any longevity, and Staff Sergeant Campbell certainly would like to make this his home. So we're trying to <coughs> get a position that letter would share with Council about that issue. And again, it popped up with methamphetamines, and they're very aware of that, and they're making a concentrated effort to combat that. And the 31st, I was invited by my peers on Council to go to the first uh, MNP meeting, Myers Norris Penny, where else the process used to hire people. And that was quite revealing to me. I had no idea what it was all about, and I thank you for inviting me. One of the methods I use with LinkedIn, 400 million people subscribing to LinkedIn. So that was really a neat thing. Uh, the DG5 uh, last night, uh, we uh, met, and what a wonderful medium to get to know our peers, theoretically to make plans for the future in a collaborative way, and, and I appreciate all of the presentations done. Today, this afternoon, and I went to the UCN Open House. We were invited, or I was invited, and they're looking at jobs in healthcare aid, office assistant, truck drivers, and others. And those are all people, professions that the community needs. So, what a compliment to UCN, and I appreciate. I think uh, this young man met with them earlier also. And on the more mundane side, I want to thank you, Derek, uh, Mr. Poole. Uh, you're a busy guy, and I hate phoning you about snow plowing. And somebody's rolling, but they call us, and they're our bosses. I call you, and I think that's the, uh, the protocol. So thank you for being positive with me and addressing both issues. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Gray. Some of the services has sent us their annual report. I'm going to pass it to the CAO in due course for distribution. 
but I do want to read um, their part on challenges and then their request, which should come to Council next meeting for um, approval or not approval. Unfortunately, 20 people moved from the Swan River Valley from their group. By the end of the year, to different cities with larger population, more of because of lack of employment, housing, entertainment, etc. They continue to be concerned about that because as people come in to train and then leave, it creates its own sets of problems. And that's the largest single challenge they face. It reflects, I think, the fact that we need to talk about, sound like a broken record, our own vision and plan so that we can address those kinds of things. That's the bad news. Here's the good news. Somewhere. I can find it. Um, Dennis has it buried in your stomach. What's that? Last page. Maybe. No? Oh, it might be on the uh, already on here. In any event, the request for funding has gone down again this year. It's, uh, I don't know if it's in that report, but it definitely is in, in 8.7. 8.7. Yeah. So, and it's gone down from 8,000 to 4,000. So I don't know if we are able to agree on that or whether it needs to go to next meeting. But if we are able to vote on that today, um, I would suggest that we do that at the end of this session. I have some other comments, however. Um, we still haven't met. It's a committee on Indigenous Services. I'm concerned about that. I am. Um, we have some big issues coming to recreation, and um, the CAO and I were talking prior to this meeting. It poses a significant challenge for us if we don't have a bigger vision to decide what we're going to do with big challenges. Let me use one example, which is the arena. If we don't know where we think we're headed, the decision making on the arena becomes problematic because if we're headed to stabilization, in fact, expansion and pro progress, the logic is we would, and if we get cooperation from our colleagues in the other councils, the logic is we would spend the least amount of money to get us through the period of time necessary to build a new arena because our current arena has a significant number of problems. And if we open up for five or six million dollars, which is what the project sort of nominally is to projected to tap to cost for reparations, and we don't even know once we open it up because it could get worse, we end up with an old building. And so <coughs> really that's not our best plan if we, 30 years from now, are going to be a flourishing community. But if 30 years from now we are going to be a community of 2,000, it may be best for us to simply do the best we can, you spend that five million and get our 20 years out of that arena. So we need to do those things ourselves now. If we don't, we're going to be, it makes it problematic because it makes it hard for the CAO to draft the request for proposals because what is it we want to achieve? That brings me to my two real buckets, RISE and the G5. Um, and the deal with RISE, firstly, yesterday, after the meeting, after I made my presentation, the manager approached me and said, in fact, they had a strategic plan that they'd done two or three years ago, but no one had looked at it. It was almost like reliving the finding out that we had a strategic plan from 2012 that no one had looked at. And you go, well, why wouldn't that be an important document to bring out when we're deciding and what our priorities were? <laughs> that would have been the starting point, one would have thought. Secondly, and, and, and at RISE, I'm going to raise this again, and, and I respect your worship. I think you need to raise it with your colleague, your fellow heads of council. I am not at all convinced that the best formula for RISE is to have two municipal councillors from each of four municipalities. Firstly, I think it needs to be, we need to invite other people, we need to invite um, 
indigenous communities and so on. But secondly, and more importantly, it should, no, you know, I bring certain skills, but I'm not at all comfortable with my capacities in economic development. I, I have certain notions and I can add things at different points, but the reality is that to do that, you need to actually understand those dynamics. You need to have someone good at it. And, and it would be pretty useful to have maybe some of our major industries and other people at that table as opposed to eight municipal councillors of varying degrees of skill. Um, and so I think we should relook at that model. And, and one of the discussions when we get to a shared services discussion, which you know, probably if I ask, because I'm leading that committee, ask for it, I'm less likely to get a meeting than I was two days ago. <laughs> I think that's safe to say. Um, that when we talk about shared services, that's one of the shared services that is being shared, but it's not necessarily being shared well. And and that's and maybe it is. Maybe my view or vision isn't what is a universal vision on those kind of things. But that discussion needs to happen and, and I'm not sure how it came to be that we decided. The idea that council needs to do everything is wrong. It needs to not do everything. It needs to do the opposite. It needs to find people who should be in those positions and then let them do them. And RISE is the classic example, as is the Recreation Commission quite candidly. Bringing me lastly to G5, I, all of you heard my speech yesterday. It is not any different than the speeches I've given here about the idea that you have to have a plan and you have to have cooperation and you have to have a vision. And if you don't have that, I, I, one of my favorite quotes is Henry Ford's that I used yesterday. Failing to plan is planning to fail. It's a certain, I'm, I can't read the future, but I can tell you with relative certainty that if we don't have a plan, if we don't have a vision, we're definitely going to fail. That we're going to continue on this downward path. And the, the town has remained stable in terms of population because all of the outline communities have been gutted for, for lack of a and if we don't want to see a difference, we've just seen one significant service in the community close, and we're going to see others. And as that happens, recruiting people will become progressively more difficult. So it's right now, it's hard enough. And there's a request in here that I think is um, forgot from the recruiting teachers, which I think is, is I don't know, I don't want to say silly, but um, why would we give people one pass? If they're going to bring, if they're going to bring up here for two weeks, give them a pass for the two weeks if we want them to come here. I mean, the idea that, that you give them one three dollar pass and that's going to be the difference maker seems to me unlikely. Uh, that's just ill thought through, in my view, um, and, and that's something else. I should tell council that um, you know. One of the counselors who wanted me to approach me, he, he liked my, my speech apparently. His colleagues, less so. And many thought it was simply a pitch for us to get more money from them, not a different way of doing business. Um, and I failed dismally apparently in communicating to them that we need to change the way we do business. It may or may not mean more money, I don't know. So that for instance, every option for every facilities on the table. If maybe we can't afford to do anything more than just to keep run the time out on our arena and eventually we won't have an arena. I don't know. I, I, I think that would be a bad plan personally. But it's not all of those things have to be available to us. We are in a critical period. And as I've said before at this council the first question for us as a valley, and the first question for us as a town is, are we at a point where our critical mass is so small we no longer can impact change? That we are now not in control of our destiny, but in fact, circumstances of our of the environment have control of us. I think we, have, we are not yet, but I think we don't act. Sort of like climate change. We can pretend and just bugger away the next 11 years or 12 years, and then we won't have a choice. Anyway, I do want to know Council's thought. I, I, I initially said to uh, 
day that I, of course, if you want to talk to me about my speech, I, I have no qualms about it. But I think I would like to have um, thought from council at some point on whether or not they think that's a good idea. And I certainly, I'm prepared to make them my own comments as I think. I thought I was clear that they were my own comments yesterday, but um, I, I just do want to make sure that everyone's on the same board, that, that that's an acceptable thing for me to do. Uh, I don't want to cause any more distress than I need to. Those are my comments. Okay, thank you very much. Just a couple comments from me uh, as far as maybe some questions that you had or comments. And, uh, firstly, with the Indigenous Relations Committee, I have had contact uh, with the uh, three chiefs that I was going, uh, first inviting. Uh, I have not been able to get some uh, common ground back. I have not received any responses back. Tomorrow was my plan to take a day off to actually pursue that a little bit harder. So I, I promise you I'll keep on doing that until we get somewhere because I think that we need all three of them together as also our Métis uh, organizations as well and and to bring it all together. So um, we'll see how we, we went out with that. Okay. I just want to comment. The, the Friendship Center, for instance, is not a Métis organization. The Friendship Center is an independent service delivery organization. Right. But there is a Métis government in right. the Métis Federation, which recognizes the federal government. And so that should be the same as the First Nations. Right. Okay. And uh, you mentioned also with the uh, touching base with our uh, three other um, uh, council, heads of council, and I did that actually last night, so I'm meeting, hopefully we can come together as well, and uh, there are a few things that I do want to discuss, and if any if members of council have any suggestions on that, you know, in that discussion that needs to be uh, had, then, uh, then let me know. And I'll let everybody know when actually when we get finally to that point. Communications uh, in the past month, or whatever, the last couple of weeks for us, for me, communications committee has met. We've discussed about the moving forward as our media relations and so on, and that we need to uh, form a policy, which we had some uh, help with uh, some other uh, partners of ours. So we'll, we'll get there as far as uh, with communications goes. So we're just kind of beginning those steps. Um, I've also had already, usually the Swan Valley Health uh, Facilities Foundation usually only meets about maybe four times a year, and we've already planned in two weeks uh, a third meeting already. So that uh, that committee is, is pretty much all old new people except for one person. So there's a lot of catching up going on, and and what uh, what their their roles and responsibilities are. So if, if anybody has questions about uh, the doctor recruitment fund that we all uh, contribute as far as all the municipalities, or if you have any questions about the health facility uh, part of it, uh, just go ahead and give me a shout. Uh, one thing on the doctor recruitment, 2019 is the last year for our, our commitments that we have with our municipal partners, so it's something that we're going to have to talk about in 2000, or well, maybe at the end of this year at least anyways, if that's something that all our partners and us want to continue doing, but there's larger discussion as far as what doctor recruitment and, and the facility needs as far as what uh, uh, Councilor White had mentioned earlier about the lack of space in the, in the clinic. Uh, today I also had a chance to meet with Gerald Farthing and he's up here, they're doing a study with UCN, he's commissioned by UCN to uh, research uh, the needs of education in areas and maybe in particular for us what is the need of an education in the next, you know, say 10 years? What, what, what is that looking like? So he met, I believe, with Councilman Tony, Councilman White. He also met with some private businesses, also with Spruce Products, LP, and all that. So he was going out and, and doing a lot of research to see exactly what our needs were. In particular, he asked us about, you know, administrative help, you know, or training, and so on. So there's a, a lot there that he's, uh, He's uh, researching right now, and uh, he'll, be come, he'll be putting on a report, I guess, probably in the next month, I would assume. Um, I don't know if, if council
Councilor Weiner and Councilor Wintoni had any comments about their uh, connection with Mr. Farley or not, because it was missing the reports, but I don't know if you had anything to add about that. I will when you're, when you're finished. Okay. <coughs> Um, the other thing is we all have uh, an email sent to us by uh, Roger Bouvier that was here to help us. He had some comments and he had some recommendations. And so um, I believe that there are some that we could follow up on and maybe act on. So I think that if, if, if each of you can take some time just to go over that again and maybe you know, give some feedback either me in person or, or to uh, Mr. Poole or um, you know, however, my email. We should probably have a look at that, and if there's some there that we need to act on, then perhaps maybe we should consider that. So, G5 for me has already mentioned already, and uh, again, I thank the members of council here that stood before the rest of uh, the G5 to make the presentation, regardless of, of uh, what uh, if it was personal or, or their own opinions and so on. I think that it's good for you to all to stand before and, and, and bring out your, your points. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good thing. So we should have more inter interaction that way, in my opinion. So before I go on to Mr. Poole, would you want to comment? Yeah, go ahead. I've got a few to, uh, to, to uh, address <coughs> a couple of the question or concerns questions. Um, first of all, <coughs> I just want uh, a little thought with settlement services in regards to their funding dropping from 8,000 to 40, 4,800. The reason for that is to avoid um, year-end financial, audited financials. I'm gonna talk just a briefly on the thought with that too and then talking about RISE as well. If we looked at a model of um, operating as a C, uh, under, over top of all those little committees as a CDC, it would avoid audited financials for each individ individual organization. Audited financials will only need to be run by the CDC, and that's where I think Councillor Gray was talking about a board of eight councillors from all, all of our sharing municipalities. That's where I feel that we should be as councillors, not on each individual entity. For example, RISE, Tourism, um, Settlement Services. I, I feel that those should be all members of the community overseen by the by the CDC. So if we were operating under over all of those as the eight councillors um, as a CDC, we could avoid some serious costs associated with each with each organization. Um, so that's a thought that and then I'm kind of working on that with the the uh, economic development side. So I might have a pitch coming up. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about. Um, Tourism meeting with Gerald and the UCN, uh, who's already commissioned by UCN to come and give uh, a recommendation. Um, and I'm pleased to uh, hear in his recommendation that he's recommending to the school division two classes to be offered, which is a tourism class for grade 11 and an eco tourism class for grade 12. So I'm excited to see those. I'm hoping that they'll be that they will come in. Um, um, September of this year, uh, which brings me to Councillor White's discussion of the new fish being added and ecotourism. That's a huge, huge um, viable industry for us to tap and to market. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, and the other one, I think that's it. I lost my train of thought. So we're good. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Poole, do you have anything that you want to add? Uh, just what's not in my superintendent report. Uh, after going through the CVA, I did find a mistake, so I got a hold of our lawyer, and, and that's getting redrafted <coughs> before we before we sign and make it final. Still working on filling the clerk position in the office. Uh, obviously, working trying to get the RFP done for the recreation committee on Thursday. Uh, myself and Darren are. Are looking at uh, different processes with the transportation committee for garbage collection and the future of it, as well as our recycling collection and processing programs. Uh, assisting Terry with implementing some procedures with the clerks as he continues to find uh, a number of efficiencies uh, in the office.
office. So he's been pretty valuable the past couple months. And yeah, that's that's about it among, I guess, the storm rule. Still complaints, referring to the policy quite a bit, but uh, pretty general there. Okay. Is everything? Yep. All right, so moving on, uh, 8.1, we have uh, the letter from the municipality of St. Anne's regarding the STARS uh, Foundation support. So we have a resolution here, but I'll just open it up first for discussion. Or actually, you know what, maybe the right thing to do is, is, is to read the resolution and then we'll have discussion. I don't think I'd get her. Uh, we're on the very edge of, of their um, <clears throat> light time. They do come here periodically, maybe two, three times a year. Um, definitely not for primary response calls, it's as they do around the city and things like that, but more for inter-facility transports when um, life flight or private carriers are not available. Or for example, like um, they had the other day in, in the city of Dawson where the airstrip was still full of snow, but they needed to get someone into the city quick. At least the helicopter could land on the tarmac and stuff like that. So, um, but for the benefit of like Swan River coming out here, uh, there's very little benefit for s stars that we see here. Uh, it's it's primarily a program that really benefits down to the south uh, for it. Councillor Dory. How does STARS business model work? I mean, they have a contract with the government, but you often see them trying to fundraise as well. What, how, I don't know, does anybody know how their business? Because like, no, you, know, you know, other private entities that have government contracts don't try and get side money from municipalities. I, I don't know. In Alberta, our province of Alberta and Saskatchewan, they are non-for-profit charity organizations where they base on fundraising from businesses, whatever, charitable stuff. Manitoba is an anomaly where they have a 10-year contract with the province uh, for it, which is personally, in, in my mind, sort of, if you're being paid by the province to provide a service under a 10-year contract, why are you out soliciting donations? Uh, there may be have legitimate reasons there that are eluding me, but uh, I think for us as a municipality, we have better places to put med dollars for medical services or other services than we do that. Councilor Lincoln, have we funded STARS in the past? This is the first year that this request has uh, come They've forward. requested multiple times. Oh, okay. We've denied them all. All right, so if we don't have an appetite to bring the resolution forward, then we'll move on. Okay. Resolve that uh, Derek Poole be authorized to sign an application and account management for Desjardins credit card. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Not too much. Good there. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Resolve that the assessment change is listed by Manitoba Municipal Relations Assessment Services dated January 17, 2019, be made to the 2019 property tax roll under the authority of Section 306 of the Munici Manitoba Municipal Act. Moved by Councilor Morial, seconded by Councilor Gray. Discussion? Councilor uh, Delorier. Like I see, they say re re or re adjustment to land and building. What is the reason that, that they? It was a it was a settlement. I know that. Oh, okay. So he. So that was the one that was scheduled. That right. was settled the day. Oh, of the okay. Event. Okay. <clears throat> Council Morial, do you have a question? Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Resolve that the town of Swan River donate six adult day passes, cost $48 plus taxes, from the pool to the Swan Valley School Division for use by student teachers during the practicum 
in the Valley from March to May of 2019. Moved by oh. Councilor White, second by. This is the one I want to talk about. Okay, Councilor Gray. Discussion. Uh, oh, well, we can finish putting the motion on the floor. I, I am going to speak again, sort of against it. That's fine. Um, <coughs> If the objective is to show them we're as cheap as possible, this is the perfect model. I, I, I don't understand. I, I'm, I'm stunned. I, um, don't, well, Councillor White was previously a, a teacher. If people come for practicum teaching, are they likely to stay or do they feel good about the class? That's, I can't answer that. I don't know the answer to that question. Would be <coughs> the building and the team would be the key. And, and the range of time here is you know, end of March, 1st of April to mid May. Why wouldn't we just give them passes? I mean, if we're trying to tra attract people and tell people, I mean, uh, it's not like we're losing money by giving them passes. It's not like they. Like, like they're students, they're coming here and we want to attract professionals who come here and make the community better. I, I mean, uh, they should know if they come and get employment that we're not going to give them passes as gifts. But uh, uh, the same with if doctors came for uh, a period of time. I, I, I don't understand that. Like we're trying to entice people to come here. Let's make them feel good about it. They're not going to use it that many times probably anyway. And if they do, that's a good thing. I, I think you just give them the passes for the time they're here. The two week or three week passes. Councilor Delorier, six um, weeks. All right, motion on the table this. We have a recreation committee meeting sure. tomorrow. Yeah, that's great. At the, get, I'd like to hear sure. what our, our uh, recreation <coughs> manager, if they have some input into it. To, that's great. There's some we're not seeing. And uh, and we can bring it, I mean, they don't need it till March, so we can bring it back next meeting. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's actually a great idea. Go ahead. It will be discussed at the, the committee, but the reason it's even on the agenda, because we do have a policy to say no. But Patty, the record director, did bring it to me, and I agreed. We know that for 10 years we've gone against that policy. That's the reason why it's on here, to get it. This is the first one of the year, so we, to get it back on the table, we would like, obviously, direction on, you know, to follow our policy or change the policy. And we know we have a policy of saying no. Uh, Council Morio and Council White. Um, I think it, as council, we need to look at like especially the hard to recruit positions in the community, like teachers and all that stuff. Like we do have, um, like with the tables and chairs and those types of donations. It's you no, know, here's the rental policy and all that stuff. But when we're dealing with, and as a committee or as council uh, or rise or whatever group identifies positions that like are hard to recruit, like doctors, nurses, teachers, those whole, whoever's identified, um, those people where they they become eligible for some of these recruitment incentives where um, here's a, instead of like, yeah, like six passes, like one pass for six people for for two months, like gee, even, we'll look at those tight lines. Like it's, uh, um, here's, a, here's a swim pass for a month. Here's, you're not gonna get it if you get hired, but Things like that, like if you have the medical recruitment, uh, uh, like residents here for a week, here's the <coughs> class for a week, or um, or things like that, or some stamp schemes, some stuff that we can go there for those hard recruits, not for the ones that are every run of the mill position that's easy to fill, but the ones the professional lawyers, um, the ones that are very hard that we we need those professionals, the ones those those professions that bring people to the community. Um, that we need to attract, and the ones that we are trying to uh, uh, entice them to come to our community versus selecting another community to go practice it. Like, it's already been identified, like identified the school division is having a hard time recruiting teachers <coughs> on a full-time basis here. So yeah, so it's, we need to make ourselves more attractive and show our, um, to, I guess, like toot our own horn for the facilities and the stuff that we got to outshine the school divisions or whatever in the cities and other bigger centers. That's something that we need to sit as a team and create a policy or something on that. So. I agree 100% with uh, Council Gray and Council Morial. Uh, 
I always get my back up and people say, well, you haven't allowed this for nine years, so why would we do that? I said, well, what's that got to do with today, you know? I appreciate the press and stuff, but times change, issues change. I don't think we're going to wear out the water, and I think we have staff there most of the time, if not all the time, and regardless, they can only go when the staff is there, or they wouldn't get in. So if you can get a doctor, or a teacher, or a physiotherapist, or a truck driver, I don't care, somebody doing that's going to help to our community, a professional person, let's welcome them. It doesn't cost us anything. Okay, so we are, I'm assuming we're tabling this? Saying to the recreation committee for Thursday. The mover and the second are agreed? Yep. Okay, so we'll table that. Okay, <clears throat> resolved that the town of Swan River donate the use of 10 tables and 50 chairs, a cost of $85 plus GST to the Swan River Lions Club. Moved by. Well, I don't understand, what's it for? Oh, they have a letter there, do they not? Yeah, yeah but it doesn't say what it's for. Just give us the tables and chairs. Okay. And it's for something that happened before. Like, I don't know. Like, uh, it's picked up January 17th. Yeah, Patty would know. I do, I do not know what the event is. We almost have to have like a request letter or something that they fill up in the details. So we really don't know remember we asked for that. Not. That's a good point. Yeah, we asked for that. Well, do, is this one of the ones where we have the policy where, no? This is a no. Well then, okay. We can we listen to the rec meeting as well? We can, but if we already have a policy. We don't have, have a mover or a seconder, but if you want to just table it, then we well, can we'll, we'll talk about it, but <coughs> we'll go from there. We'll come back with a recommendation at meeting. Oh yeah, there's the, this is where this information for the, for the um, <coughs> settlement services was. So I can see it now. Okay, so moving on, Swan Valley um, Lines Recycling funding request. Do you have that there? I'll open up for discussion. Uh, Councilor Devorier. Like, I'd seen this letter here, but I, I was under the impression there was another letter where they basically asked when we they want we wanted them to stop providing service, or was that just paraphrasing? There was no letter saying the exact date. Oh, okay. Okay. That was what they were going to discuss at that meeting when they drafted this. Okay. They meant that the hard date meant. I don't know if this is more than what council wants to chew on right now as far as setting it to a committee, but we can open up for discussion with Council Morio and uh, Council White. Mr. Poole, with the Lions Agreement for Recycling, um, is there provisions in that agreement uh, what is done with deficits that is incurred by that group? No. I don't know. I don't know of the agreement. I, we, it is a fee for service, it's a per tonnage fee that we pay. So, so if it's a fee for service, why are we asked, like... With, this is the third time we've increased, I think. It's a... Council, why does that mean Council Delorey? Out of respect for the, uh, so many wonderful things the Lions Club does for our community, with the support of the town and the taxpayers, I think it incumbent on us to maybe have a special meeting with the Lions to see come in and bring us up to date what's happening here. Why is this happening? Because they've got some expenses in there. I was reading through, I'm not sure what they meant. So it, that's a big deal, those numbers they're talking about there. Out of respect for them, I think we should meet with them before we make a decision. Councilor Delorier. Just comment on Councilor White's comments. Make a decision on <coughs> continuing service with them or paying the paying their deficit? The deficit. Okay. Um, and I'm glad that you found out what our percentage of the deficit would be because I was a little bit myth that they just came to us and asked for the whole thing when they provide service to a number of other municipalities. So at the very most, I would only want to pay what our share would be. Yeah. And they can go to the other municipalities and get what their share would be. Um, we have in the past covered their, their deficit probably about five years ago, I remember, 
the same song and dance, and that's when we got up to the two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year that we paid them. So, uh, I don't know if, if uh, yeah. transportation and environmental committee wants to come back and make a recommendation. Uh, the, the lions do do a lot of good in the community. I guess, Derek, do you have a do you have a recommendation for us? Uh, I guess if. If I do have a recommendation, it would be to, as discussed at the committee on the committee level, is to to change contractors when it comes to recycling, collection, and processing. Uh, I think the the amount that they've asked for moving forward puts us over what our proposals were for contractors to do the same work. So we would be expending. There's a there's a cheaper option for going moving forward as far as paying off their debts. Uh, yeah, if you want, I guess if you, I don't know what dollar amount to recommend, but because it is, like this is, this is the, this is it, this is a community group, how do you, this has been the problem for a very long time when they're in trouble, it's uh, we have no agreement, it's a fee for service, we give them our truck at no cost, we, we've subsidized them to, to keep them going. Uh, they, they run on an extremely shoestring budget. We can't do what they're doing with with, uh, with the manpower that we have. So it's uh, it's it's a tough one to decide, but it's ultimately up to council. Councilor Gloria, then Councilor Morio. All right. Oh, you didn't? Okay, Councilor Morio. So I think we we take this back to the transportation committee, and then we come back next. Council meeting with a recommendation after we flesh it out, answer up to any more questions, and we may have a better plan of the strategy and the direction that we got with the rest of the garbage and recycling program that we're looking at. I suggest we kick that back to that committee for discussion and recommendation. Councillor uh, White. Uh, I would encourage your, your committee to consider asking for representation from the Alliance Clubs to be part of at least one of your meetings. Councillor Deloria. Um, further to Councillor White's comment, was there anything in their, their financial statements that we provided that raised any eyebrows to you, Derek, as, as far as anything that we may not know what they mean? There is nothing that, that I've seen that, that jumped out. It's like I've got all the invoices for the other municipalities. I've run it by our CFO too. He's, he's checked out everything. Nothing, nothing came. With no comments from the CFO. Yeah. The so second part of my question is, obviously, with the ad that went out in today's paper, looking for, uh, looking for new recycling contractors. Uh, you've have you talked with the Lions leadership, and they're they're basically <coughs> okay to, to cease operations. Yes. So they I know. That. Yeah, they know our and plan. Is there, is there any hard feelings on their part as far as? Not at all. Not at all? Okay. I'll Did you have a question? Yeah. Doesn't the province give back money to municipalities for recycling based on their collection of money? And where is that in here? Uh, that is not in here. Mm -hmm. The town gets that. That's under our MS, MSSM. <coughs> so this is, this is the lines in and outs. The lines, well, the lines revenue comes, comes from the product state. that they sell. If, if we're getting money for processing of materials, we don't do any processing, do we? It's not of the recycling. Right. So why are we keeping the recycling money? I'm, I'm missing something. We're not. We give that and more to the lines. Well, uh, then I'm looking for something wrong. I, I, I'm, I'm having trouble with the financial statement. The financial statement shows bottle refunds of 56, 43, uh, green manifold electro uh, that's electronics, 9387, material processed of 228,000, materials sold of 34,000, paper payments of 6666, 66, and pay commission income, which is, I assume, a co op refund. Of six forty for total income of two hundred eighty five dollars, eighty five thousand dollars. Where in there is the money from Manitoba? Uh, no, that won't be in here. The province doesn't give the contractor money; they give the municipality money. We submit. Well, where's their? Where's our income? We. I do not have the environmental health 
the, what I'm saying is, uh, look, we, we say we give uh, somewhere in here, it has to be the money we give them. Otherwise, we owe them money. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out. I, I, I couldn't, that's the part I can't understand. Okay, we have, I guess it's not in there. Because they have a bottom line based on those numbers, which well, doesn't include our numbers. Right, which doesn't include the money that we should be giving them. Yeah, so that would change that bottom line. Mm -hmm. it, well, I mean, where's the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that we give, or two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars that we give them? In, oh, in their in their profits, sorry. Yeah. The where where to go is page six, mm -hmm. which is the income piece. That's the piece I'm missing. I don't know what the material process is. Yeah, the material process, I believe, is the municipal part. But there's more than that because there's. Uh, well, it has to be more because ours are more, is more than that. And then there's the other municipalities, which I'm a little stunned that their amount is so small. But even that, that's a different issue. Yeah, I guess I can't. I would have to contact Alliance to, to get a clear breakdown of their ordinary income lines to see which percentage. Have, can, can Mr. Ganita not give us where our expenditure line is? That's all I really need to know is where, our, because our expenditure line, if, we, if we're sending them money, it's got to be included here somewhere. But that's my problem, is if we've got, we're getting the money for recycling. If, if material processed, and, and if they're calling it material processed, I'd like to know why they would establish it that way. If it's, it shouldn't work, if it's grant money, it's grant money, whatever. But if it's material processed, I presume what that means is that, um, that that's money that they have shipped somewhere and they've gotten the money back for it. That's what I, that's what I would be into it. I, I would guess that it's not that way. I would guess that the income from the municipalities is included in that 220 but then isn't our, how much is ours? Because uh, there was a different form, a different. Are you 2018 is 194,793. Okay, so maybe that's what it is. Can you double check on that before our committee meeting? Yeah. Because that's, that's the key to me. It's in that 238, you think? And so of all the money that, we, that were, was collected, of all the materials, we, all the, because if that's the municipal money, <laughs> this is this is what we are being told that for all of the municipalities that are presumably recycling, the total we're spending. Um, what is your total? Three hundred and fifty-four thousand dollars to get back fifty-four thousand dollars. Those are stunning. If that's true, those are stunning numbers. We're spending six times as much. No, seven times as much as we're collecting to collect it. Surely those aren't the numbers. I mean, if they are, then I think they're awful close to that. Like, yeah, it doesn't lie. Like, recycling costs money. We we'll make money out of it. Yeah, get to me. make money, but there's they, uh, commercial cardboard. They make no money on that at all. That's a huge expense to them. There's uh, other. I was now <coughs> aluminum uh, cans and all that have uh, the, the, the revenue there that they were getting has gone into the toilet. Like, there's a lot of things there that you'll learn that they make nothing on it. Out the of, labor costs are intensive. Out of our 194,000 expense, around 110 of that is commercial cardboard, and the province gives zero dollars rebates on, on any commercial recycling. Nothing. <clears throat> and why are we spending money on it? It's not recycling. If it's not being used or anything, it's not recycling. It's just garbage being moved from one place <laughs> to another place, just add it to the garbage. The, 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 the commercial cardboard is shipped out and recycled. It is, but that's that's but included in our <coughs> profits. We don't get those profits. The Lions gets those profits. They get the commercial well, cardboard. Paper payments. Right, so and, and you don't, they don't get any money for commercial cardboard. Not in 2018. They used to. The prices used to be much better. Well, what? 
I guess they're not doing it for the money, they're doing it because... It's but it's not of any value to Whatever. Okay. Right. And I, and I guess I'll leave it to your committee. I, I, I just <coughs> we are expending money for them to do that, and we are we are not getting. Well, no, it's not. It's not just that. I'll leave it to the committee, and then we're going to report. But but for me, if 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 you're gathering something that we're not that's not being paid for, <laughs> I, I don't understand. I'm, I'm just baffled. I don't understand it at all. That that's not model that's just stupid. Is the other option is leave it in the landfill? Yes, yeah, burn it. And that, that's what the pot did for five years. <coughs> that, that, that's especially as far north as we are with shipping costs being so much. Yeah. That's that's why the pot went five years without a recycling program. They just put it in the landfill. Right. So it, that that is an option. I mean, I'm not, I, I, I mean we could restrict it to things like bottles and and things something where there's some profit or some value in it, but but. It, why would we? I, I don't. I, I'll leave it to the committee and I'll, I'll wait for the report. Can we burn it legally? Our new license uh, has restricted cardboard burning. There's no, no paint allowed. No, I think it's just twigs. Just our new license got us. The environment? Like I'm stable development. Well, then maybe we need to make an application to bury that. Or we can shred it. Or we can, we've been shredding it as well. <coughs> That was my question. Yeah, okay. it was my comment. My comment was, why are we just shredding it with the equipment that we have out there? To we have it. Okay. Because there's there's such an excess because the expenses were so big to the lines that we we would take it in bales and throw it through with regular. Work. Okay, so we'll let it go to the committee and we will wait for the report. Now. That's okay. So moving on, uh, result of the. 2019 Swan Valley Settlement and Immigration Services budget be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> okay, next uh, 8.8, .8, we have the Summit Search Group Hiring Services. The resolution resolved that the town of Swan River hire the services of summit search group to coordinate the filling of the CEO position. Moved by Councillor Montoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion, and I guess <coughs> that uh, Councillor Delorier open up on that. Yeah, our committee met um, <coughs> last night after we had some time to let the two presentations percolate as far as uh, what we had heard. And we, uh, they scored almost <coughs> evenly uh, in a couple of different uh, categories. They one was higher than the other one was higher, but for the most part, they scored fairly evenly. Um, you know, it it really was a is a was a hard decision, uh, and I guess at this point, it's just a recommendation that we go with Summit. Um, I think both would be able to do a a fine job of finding us a, a CAO. Um, summit at the price point we're looking at is, is a better value economically and they also provide a longer guarantee but they're both fairly close um, and uh, there's just some intangibles that we felt that Summit made a, a, a better presentation as far as what their process would be as far as even what sussing out what we we're looking for and what what it is we're actually asking for, um, deciding what we need, uh, a few things like that, and and also as far as selling the community itself, uh, the presentation with Summit uh, just fared a little bit better. So that's why our recommendation was put there. I don't know if anybody else from the committee wants to add anything that I may have missed, feel free. Okay. Any further discussion? I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that we are moving forward with, uh, I was an advocate for a, a, a hit hunting firm for this position and I'm glad that the uh, committee chose to go this route. I just want to comment on, on that. Is, is I, I was hesitant at first, I, 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 and I was pleasantly <coughs> surprised when, when Councilman Tony pers persevered and, and 
assisted me look at this, and I'm, and I'm thankful that he did, because I think the, these are going to really do us good, whichever road we go. Okay, Councilor Gray. Well, I'm going to comment on it again later, but on the financial, on the check registers that we're about to approve, the last payment to the BC Advisory Group was 9905 and we had paid already, if you recall, about twelve. So we will have, we would have spent twenty one thousand dollars, I think, on that process. Um, not to mention our own time and so on. I just draw to your attention that the that the uh, what were the lack of better word apparent savings previously may not have been savings. Um, when it comes, I just have a, a suggested amendment to the resolution at the end that, that uh, it's as uh, filling the seal as position as set out in the terms and conditions of the proposal. So that I think that's acceptable. Does that apply being more in the second? Just set out the box in exactly what was. Did you get that? As set out. In, in terms and conditions of their proposal, oh. just so that we know exactly that's a proposal and what we're considering. So, should this pass, um, will you, Mr. Mayor, be contacting both firms and letting them know the outcome? I can, and, and the chair can, one or the other. Okay, by so. I, 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 Johnny, that's I, or Council Tony, that's I contact, but I can. Okay. In regards to, to that, if I mean, I have no issues with that. I was the one who brought both of them to the committee. If you wouldn't, if the committee would like me to follow up with that, I'd be most willing to do that. Sure. And then and maybe what you can do is get uh, uh, Councillor Delorey's uh, information as far as email and contact information to, uh, again, if this passes, uh, to him, then we can carry on from there. Absolutely. And, and I appreciate and it. He'll be Councillor Deloria will be CC'd on the, on the emails to go for them as well. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Councillor Gray? I presume we're going to have some form of a formal contract with them. They may already have a strategy form of contract, but uh, I want us not to do things the same old way. I'm just sort of saying, okay, you've got the contract and here's enough. I really think we need to have a formal contract. They, they, I think they have a formal contract, but we may want to have additional provisions in it. I don't know. I'll leave that to the CAO. Leave the license she deal with that. I've got another few coming up in a moment. But, um, That's good. Yeah. In regards to that, um, with both companies, no contracts. Um, will be put in place until they actually formally meet us out as part of the conversations that we have with them. So um, upon following up with this, I don't think that there'll be, he's going to come to, uh, he or she, whomever we we um, vote on, will be coming to meet with the group. And at that time, that's when the contracts will be reviewed and, and looked at. Um, there isn't, this was obviously the preliminary pitch to get one of the companies and then we'll, um, using that material, they'll develop the the official contract that you'll see. Councilor Gray, do you have another question? No, I, I don't care as long as we have a formal agreement that's, that we have control of the right. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Okay, moving on. Be it resolved that the accounts is hereby, follows by hereby approved for payment, general accounts number. 23,794 to number 23,898 for a total of 594,812.43. Payroll account checks number 4382 to number 4389 for a total of 101,966.76. Moved by Councillor Lantoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, questions? Councillor Gray. Have five comments. The first I've already made about BC Advisory. Um, we only have a little account from Dale McCaffrey this time, sort of, thank God. Um, but we still have Veronica and, and whatever, and, and 
at some point I really want to talk about that and about the way we deal with professional services. There are three um, smaller items. Yes, three. Um, we have a bill to Timberland Inn. It's check number 23814. Breakfast for firefighters. What's that? That I couldn't directly answer, but I'm guessing the I'm guessing they went out for breakfast after a call, but I could excellent. I couldn't say that. And why did we pay? <coughs> I would have to ask the fire chief that. Is, is there some policy on that? I, I would assume that uh, unless there's an there's something in the collective agreement, unless there's a policy. I'm not sure why we would pay that. I don't think I've seen that before, but I guess no. you can follow up with Darren maybe for us. Yeah. Unless the chair knows anything about that. I'm not sure, but I was referring to the white. I've seen those expenses come through before um, for things like that. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's the uh, fire chief can uh, clarify it, but I I'm, uh, I think it's the town pays it, but it under their firefighter fund reimburses the town that gets an in and out type deal. But either the CFO or the fire chief can. So out, of the, out of the firefighter fund, I don't understand what that means. They have their own fund that they collect monies amongst themselves, like a, a portion of their wages. Um, they put into like a, a firefighter fund for things that they choose to do on their own. They have an association, the firefighters yeah. have an association, and, and they have their own check. Yeah, so Why yeah. would we pay for it? And then I, I don't understand. If they're going to do that, I, I excellent idea, but I, I understand why we pay for it. Um, Can you get clarity on that? I don't know where it was. Here it is. Um, February 1st, Splash Rolls, 45 life jackets. It's up with that. I don't know. I mean, I, I just. Maybe all of our life jackets were out at the same time. I don't know. That again, I'd have to ask. Okay. They probably have a timeline on them. No. So you're only allowed to use it for X number of years after September. I'm going to guess. It just surprises me. Well, should they be being purchased when we haven't passed the budget? What if we don't include them in the budget this year? Now they've forced our hand. We kind of have to. I'm with you. Which brings me to the, the, the bigger issues, the two bigger issues. Um, the first is um, I don't know where it is, but it's. It's uh, Revell Street. Um, I'm not sure, and, and certainly I'd like to see the contract that provides for the fee. I don't know how the fee came to be, but um, we have used Riddell. I've only been involved for three months, but we had the three months before that. Um, and. I don't know how often we use it. Not at all, as far as I can tell. Uh, no, every land transaction is in the No, she built separately for that. I think so. I, at least I, that's my understanding, because that, uh, there was a bill from before. So I guess I can... What I'd like to know is what's the retainer for? How is it charged? What does it reflect? Yeah, we have that. We have that and, and have we gone through a process of tendering that as we have with our audit or presumably will with our audit? We, since I've been here, we have tendered on, on the retainer, I believe, at least once. I'd just like to see that okay. at some point. Because $3,000 isn't very much, quite candidly, depending on what the hourly rate is and depending if we're using it. Because we've used two other council extensively Without ever involving her, we've had um, major <coughs> screw-ups because we didn't involve council on contracts. This is many years ago, but um, and so I'm concerned with this process. That's the first part. The second part is more problematic. It's it, it's it's an individual, not because I care about the payment to the individual, but because of the process. It's. Um, Calvin, Calvin Johnson. It's a contract amount for because one person left and another person did. 
There are three things involved in this discussion. We have no personnel policy currently. We have no process for how we hire, how we fire, how we promote, uh, what conflicts of interest are allowed or not allowed, what there would be for a conflict of interest, um, how we resolve disputes amongst management. None of that, which is really problematic because we've never approved positions, and that can be fortunate in some discussions, but it's not really the proper way. So the process, I, I was the one who spoke and said, we should never be talking about we're hiring Calvin Johnson, because I could care less who we hire. But we should never have a situation if we have a person hired where we haven't got a clue that the position was even being offered. The process in government, in any governmental structure, is that somebody approves, A, the positions, the number of positions, and secondly, when there's a vacancy, somebody approves the filling of that vacancy. In the federal government, it's called a notice of vacant position. In the federal government, it's called a uh, conditional approval for hiring. Or some, I can't remember their phrase. But there's a process where, where, the, where the people, where the government says, yes, go ahead. Now, that could be the government committee. It could be um, the entire council. It doesn't matter. But there's, there's got to be a process for saying that's the case. Because when we're nearing the end of the budget year, we may want to hold positions vacant, recognize that we aren't uh, I think, uh, a problem, because it may impact our, our ability to, make, to be a, provide a balanced budget. Governments do that all the time. In fact, the last year I was in um, Justice, there was a standing sort of 8% vacancy rate. So we don't have positions approved. And so it feels like random. And, and when I said we should give up the idea of us hiring individuals, I didn't mean that we should just turn it loose and get, have no control. I meant the exact opposite. So, which brings me to the last point in terms of first health policy. I'm frustrated with the idea that, for instance, we have no conflict of interest policy with hiring. So that if I were the CAO and decided that we needed a support person, I could hire my wife. I could hire my daughter. If I were the superintendent of public works, well, the kids are small, so they're not likely to become greater operators next week. But I could hire a, one of them as a greater <coughs> operator or promote them to the um, deputy superintendent's position without any reference to counsel. And I think people should not be able to be past an entry level position without a express approval of counsel. We, we, we have uh, a, a policy because remember when Deneen, when that came into into play when Deneen got hired back then? Um, but I remember deal, us dealing with that and we had some sort of written uh, policy. It's not in all that and all net it's not in that I saw. And it's not on our web okay, and we didn't yeah, have it. So other than that, we'll have to look it up. Yeah. Okay. Let's dig that up and see what, the, what but, the policy. but there are places where that's already a problem within our organization. Right. And I'm frustrated to see that because it is the absolute opposite of transparency. And we'll get to the very camera session and I have further comments on that. Okay. Councilor and Tony. Getting back to the checks. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, no, it's about the check uh, well, to him. Absolutely. No, I get that. Um, my question is. We have for Lou McClurg snow blowing sidewalks. I thought we took care of our own sidewalks. Uh, yeah, but between the the RCMP and Quick Stop, uh, I guess the the issue is is our enforcement just never worked, and it creates a major safety issue. So the people they just do not clean off their sidewalks, and the people will walk down the highway, literally, and. Uh, Instead of instead of doing that, we we've always we've, we've gone through the enforcement. We we can write them letters till they're blue in the face. I guess we can do it and charge them, but uh, I know that we've had that process. Even hiring Lou, and charging these people who do it and who don't do it, uh, it's just that that process never came to be. And Lou's always cleaned off the sidewalks. Uh, mostly for a safety issue. It's not because they're favored. It's not even because 
it's a policy. It's because if they don't do it and we rely on the businesses, people walk on the highway. What's charging? Yeah. Okay. I can we can we can write a letter saying uh, we know how many feet belong to each business. I mean, because if that's our position, pretty soon we'll be doing all the all the business sidewalks. Right now, the, there's lots of businesses that do clean their sidewalks. Yeah. If our position is that if you don't do it long enough, we'll eventually hire Lou McClure to clean it. Yeah. Then, Councilman I guess that, that that was my my going to be my point entirely. Yeah. Is I think that that should be bailed out. However, I think that. We need that. I'm assuming is in our policy as well for the downtown core to be responsible for the sidewalks. Um, I think that <coughs> needs to be revisited or, or sent out again, um, and then billing forward. I, I I agree because next thing you know we'll be lo looking after yeah. sidewalks from one end of. Main Street all the way down to the other end if we're not building out for it. I was under the impression that this was being built out, but yeah, no, it's not a problem. We will do it right away. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Resolved the town of Swan River bylaw number one, 2019, to amend its bylaw number two, 2018, which provided for the expenditure of borrowing of money for the installation of curb, gutter, and asphalt pavement at the 300 block of 12th Avenue South and the 1200 and 1300 block of 3rd Street South as a local improvement be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Morio. Sorry. <coughs> Discussion? It's a recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. <laughs> We're going to save 16 minutes. We're just holding it up You got all that? Discussion mm -hmm. alone. I got it. Okay. Resolve that. I res uh, sorry. Resolve bylaw 12, 2018, being a bylaw outlining fire pre prevention and emergency services, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, Councillor Gray. It is not ready to be here. It has not gone through the committee. It has not had public hearing. It is not the process we agreed we were going to follow. Is that the I am moving the table to the, the committee, the committee to have committee? a public hearing to give a notice for if people want to talk. And there, again, some of these I don't care. Or I think we should, you know, we should do. One reading at a time for the most part. Most of the time, I don't care. But where there are substantial changes that will affect the public, uh, and and particularly in this case, there are drafting errors. Then, in those circumstances, it needs to go back to the committee for detail. Okay. Move from seconder. Agree. Okay. So I'll be table. The chair of uh, that committee will set up a, our next meeting. Got that, Councillor White? He'll be good here. You know what I'm you for Okay, good. I just want to hear it out of his mouth. <laughs> okay, resolve that pursuit. Oh, I'm sorry. We, uh, did we know that? We're ready to go. I guess we are ready to go. Okay, so resolve that pursuit to Section 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council go to committee and close the meeting to the public to discuss the following items. We have CO hiring, plus I think we have personnel on there as well. Um, is there anything else? No? Okay. Well, I wouldn't mind talking generally about um, the lawsuit. Okay, so um, maybe I, I think we, we should talk well. about that because uh, we're going to talk about our committee, but I... I the pool lawsuit? Yes. Okay, so we'll just add that as well. Okay. Okay. Moved by uh, Councillor Montoni, seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. <coughs>